Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video uh, we are going to be discussing two problems from the rotational motion section uh, of Pathfinder and these two are related to rotating pulleys you could say. So this question over here is check 12 and this question is the build you understanding 33. So first let's start with the build question. So in this question we have a setup. Masses of the pulleys and the threads are negligible in comparison to the mass M of the load hanging from the lower pulley. Radius of the smaller drum of this two step pulley is R and that of the larger drum is capital R. So this radius is small r and this radius is capital R. Now it's given that there is no friction in the axles of the pulleys, whereas friction between the thread and the peripheries of the pulleys is sufficient to prevent slipping. So, so the velocities of the string in contact with the pulleys move at the same velocities as the pulleys, okay? And now we have an external agent who's pulling this end with a constant velocity V and we have to find the power delivered by our pulling agency. So guys, one way you can uh, fi find out the instantaneous power delivered is by doing the dot product of F dot V, right? So you find out the tension force at this point, at this particular point P, and then you do F dot T dot V and you'll get the power delivered by the person. But we can also think of this uh, problem in a different way. So uh, as the guy pulls this string, because of the no-slip no conditions, uh, this pulley will start rotating with some angular velocity omega. Uh, even this pulley will start rotating with some other arbitrary omega, which could be the same as omega, but we don't really know. And, and also the mass m is going to rise by some value. So essentially the work done by the external agent is transferred as the rotational kinetic energy of these two pulleys. The part of the work done by P goes to increasing the potential energy and kinetic energy of this mass smaller. But as it is given that the masses of the pulleys are to be neglected, so we can actually neglect the contribution of the rotational kinetic energies and we can only focus on our mass M. So technically this problem is just, you know, we have to find the work done by this tension over here. This, that tension force is the force that is doing the work on the mass M, right? And clearly as the block M, Okay, so now I know the block of mass M is move, is going to move with a constant velocity, right? Because the point P is being pulled with a constant velocity. So, and that would just mean that the net force has to be zero. So the upward tension has to equal the weight of the block. So from here, we directly know the value of the tension as Mg. So what is the power, power delivered to the mass M by this tension force? So that is going to be T dot V of the block. And V block is the velocity of the velocity with which the block M is rising. So now if we can determine V block in terms of V, then our question is done pretty much, right? So we are going to be doing that now. Okay guys, so we know that this point moves to the right with some velocity V. So each point on this string, just by the fact that the string is inextensible, will have to move to the right with the same velocity V. And now it's given that we have enough friction to prevent slipping, so each point on the circumference is also going to move with the same velocity V. And by extension I can say, even this point will move up uh, with the velocity of v. And also the upward pulley let's it's going to rotate right and let's say its angular velocity is omega. So the, this bigger radius is given to us as capital R. So we know that capital R omega equals v. So at the velocity at this point over here is smaller omega. Let's call it v dash. So from v dash, so from here we can say v dash is simply the ratio of small r by capital R times the total velocity, right? So basically this end of the string is moving down with a velocity of v prime. Okay, and by extension I can also say that this end moves down with a velocity of v prime. Now finally we want the velocity of the center of the pulley and that, so that is simply going to be the average of v and v prime. So v of the center of the pulley is the same as v block and that, that would be v minus v prime divided by 2 and that will be v by 2r times 1 minus small r by capital R. So so after substituting the, we'll get the power delivered by the guy as this particular value. Okay, so now let's move on to the next problem. Okay guys, so now we are going to be doing check your understanding problem 12. So again, he, we have a system of pulleys and uh, again it is given that the mass of the thread and the pulleys are negligible. Now the upper pulley is still a two-step pulley in which the radius of the smaller is of smaller drum is smaller and that of the larger drum is basically 2r. So the radiuses are in the ratio of 1 is to 2 here. Uh, at the end, at one end, the thread is wrapped on the smaller drum of the two-step pulley and at the other end of block, the block of mass M2 is attached. So again, it is given that the friction, there is friction between the threads and peripheries of the pulleys. So the only difference is that in this question, we have to find the acceleration of the block M1. So M1 is given to be nine kgs and M2 is given to be one kg. So let's just take this as the original height of the mass M1 and M2. So let's take this as the original reference potential. Now we know that M1 is gonna go downwards. So let's say it goes down by an amount of Y. And we know that M2 is gonna go up by some amount of Y prime. So now we have to determine Y in terms of Y prime. And for that, we have to use string constraint. Uh, this, this string over here that I'm, you know, pointing out with a laser, this, the length of this part 
or the instantaneous change in length of this part has to be zero. So basically what I'm gonna do is that the delta of the length of the string has to be equal to zero. So this is what I'm gonna do. So and now I want you to pay close attention to the markings that I'm about to make. Okay, so the end of the string attached to a mass M2 get displaced by an amount of Y prime. So as clearly this pulley is going to rotate. So consider a circumferential point, something like this. It will get displaced along the circumference by the same amount of Y dash. And we assume that mass M1 moves down by an amount of Y. We can also say that the center of this pulley also gets displaced by the same amount of Y. So we can also say that this end of the string is getting extended by an amount of y and this end of the string is getting extended by the same amount if you write y dash which is a decrease in the end of the string equals 2y you'll actually get the wrong answer and why is that because the thing is if you observe this end over here even this is getting displaced right so the radius of the smaller drum is actually half of the radius of the bigger drum which means that displacement is also going to be half of the displacement of the circumferential points of the bigger drum which which means the distance by which you know this end gets displaced along the disc is going to be y dash by 2 so where are the string lengths actually changing so we know that this point actually went up by an amount of y prime. This point attached to the lower drum actually got displaced in some direction like this and the displacement was, was equal to y prime by two. This point actually went down by an amount of y and similarly this point also went down by an amount of y. So this is how the instantaneous length is changing. So at this point over here, the string length is decreasing and at this point, the string length is increasing. Here also the string length is increasing. Two y plus y prime by two has to equal y prime. And, for, and after solving this, we'll get y prime is equal to 4y. So now as we have a relation between y prime and y, now we have two approaches to solve this problem. So one, one solution is obviously force balance. So you have to assume t1, t2, t3, all three of the strings. Uh, and the reason for that is it's because the pulleys are rotating, right? And in order for the pulley to rotate, uh, the tension has to be different in the strings. So, and now you have to, you know, solve for these three tensions and then you'll get the answer. If you balance the torque about the center of this pulley, you'll actually get T2 equal to T3, right? You can consider the pulley as massless. So about the center, these two torques have to balance. So T2 is equal to T3. So I'm not gonna be solving this with the force balance approach. I'll be using the energy conservation approach to find the acceleration. So let's say this is our mass M1, this is our mass M2, and the horizontal line is our initial reference. And uh, we assume that the mass M1 moved down by an amount of Y. So, and by string constraint relation, we obtain that M2 will move up uh, by an amount of 4Y. So this will be the same ratio for the velocities and the acceleration also, right? Because that is just the time derivative of the position vectors. So now what I'm going to do is write down the total mechanical energy of, uh, of a system of these two blocks. Now guys, one more important thing. If, the, if in the question they mentioned that you should not neglect the mass of the pulleys, then you need to also write down the rotational kinetic energy of the pulleys as well. But in this question, the situation is fairly simple, easy. So let's say the velocity with which this guy goes down is V. So the kinetic energy of block M1 is half M1 V squared and kinetic energy of block M2 is half M2 times 4 V squared. So from the zero potential line, M1 descends by an amount of Y. So it's potential energy actually decreases by an amount of M1 GY and the other guy rises up by an amount of 4Y. So this is the total mechanical energy of these two blocks combined. This must be a constant and cannot and should not vary with time. So now what we are doing is setting dE by dt as zero. It will be M1 V times dV by dt, which is going to be the acceleration of block M1, which let's just take it as A. And then we have M2 times 16, gain V dV by dt. So which is going to be V times A minus M1 G dy by dt is V M2 G times 4y dot, which is again v. This has to be equal to zero. Now, as you can see, we can cancel out the v's. And after substituting all the values in, you'll get the acceleration of the mass m1 as two meters per second square in the downward direction and the acceleration of mass M2 to be eight meter per second square in the upward direction. Okay guys, so from our previous page analysis, we got that if this mass moved down by an amount of dy, then M2 gets displaced by an amount of four dy. And if M2 gets displaced by an amount of four dy, this end of the string gets displaced by 2dy, right? Now, if you observe the lower pulley now, the center of the pulley, it moves down exactly as M1 moves, right? So this moves down by an amount of dy. And if you uh, if you look at the right side of the pulley, it is exactly attached to smaller drum, right? So its instantaneous displacement is going to be same as this displacement 2dy. The, the instantaneous displacement of this point is going to be dy in the downward direction, right? Let's say this is the diameter. Now consider this point over here, that is a part of 
the drum. I know that each point, uh, you know, in this string displaces by an amount of 2dy. So if I take this point, it mo it displaces by 2dy above. Even this string point, even that will displace by 2dy. So uh, as this is, you know, attached to the string, the instantaneous displacement is again going to be 2dy in the vertical direction. And if this point displaces by an amount of 4dy, then even this point will displace by an amount of 4dy. So we can essentially say that the point over here it displaces by 4 dy. So now as you guys can see there is as we go towards the right the velocity is decreasing uh, it becomes dy at the center and so somewhere in between the velocity becomes zero and that is our instant center of rotation so let's say it's somewhere over here let's call that point a c. Okay, so now uh, I'm separately drawing the displacement diagrams so this end is 2 dy at the opposite end it uh, the displacement is 4 dy so if I join these two the line of intersection of these two is actually where the velocity is zero so this is the point that we're looking for the instantaneous center of rotation so the center is going to be somewhere here because and we know that its velocity is dy now guys if you observe the smaller triangle and the bigger right triangle uh, we can see that the ratio of sides is 2 is to 1 which means the ratio of bases is also going to be 2 is to 1 and the diameter of our lower drum uh, that you can easily find out so th this is 2r and this is r so 2r plus r is going to be 3r that is exactly the diameter of the lower drum so this is 3r and we have to split 3r in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so this ic is going to be at a distance of 2r from the left end or at a distance of r from the other end okay, so you can also find out the omega of the drum pretty easily so, you know angular rotation so let's call that as d theta and you can write d theta as 2 dy divided by r now if you divide by dt on both sides then you'll get the omega of the drum it is going to be 2 dy by dt was simply the velocity v right so velocity v of our block m1 so this is going to be 2v by r okay so that was it for this video guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below do like share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and that's it thanks for watching